Mr. Heman. Sir. You are from Guntur. Yes, sir. Guntur district. Uh, Guntur Chilaklur district. Which part of Guntur? Uh, southern part of Guntur district. Chilaklur Pet Municipality. What was the old name of Guntur? Uh, I don't uh, know. I didn't. It's known as Guntaluru Gartapuri. What is Gartapuri? No idea. The land surrounded by water at that time. Gartapuri. Gurthapuri or Gartapuri. So that is the old name of Guntur. In what way the Guntur is famous for as far as agriculture or industry are concerned? Sir, as far as the agriculture is concerned, uh, Guntur is famous for its uh, chilli production, especially the, uh, the variety of uh, chilli which famously we call Guntur chilli or the Teja variety is famous in Guntur district. And apart from chillies, uh, there is also a production, uh, higher production of uh, tobacco and as well as uh, cotton in the as semi-arid regions of the Guntur district, that is the Palnadu region. And when it comes to the agriculture diversity of the eastern part that is uh, uh, inundated with the Krishna uh, uh, delta, so we see paddy growing in the taluks of uh, Tenali and Prepal, sir. You have done your B house in manufacturing engineering, is yes, it true? Yes, sir. What is PM Pranam? PM Pranam. Uh, Sir, I don't exactly remember. You have done manufacturing in your yes. region, no? That's why I am asking you, what is PM Pranam? It's program of restructuring awareness and nourishment and also ameliorating the Mother Earth. Okay, sir. So that is the full name of uh, Pradhan Mantri Pranam. It's the new concept uh, that has been introduced in the budget of uh, Union Government. It deals with the uh, absolute uh, reduction of the chemical fertilizers and promoting some sort of uh, newer way of thinking, particularly organic farming. That is the newer invention of manufacturing sector. The second uh, thing is, what is MISTI? That's also a new introduction in manufacturing sector of uh, this uh, Pradhan Mantri, uh, this uh, union budget. What is MISTI? Uh, sir, I think uh, MISTI is related to the mangrove sustainability development of mangroves and the local uh, uh, coastal region sustainability program. As in far what as way I mangroves are helpful? What is mangrove? What sir? way it is helpful? Why they are promoting this misty that is mangrove initiative shoreline habitat uh, tangible income scheme? Misty. What way mangroves are useful? So firstly, mangroves are uh, vegetations uh, especially of the intertidal regions where the salinity is not uh, greater than the 35 uh, parts per million. It's not salty or it's not uh, fresh water. It's what we term as brackish water uh, uh, vegetation. Mangroves uh, mainly act as a resource, uh, uh, as a buffer in terms of natural calamities. Like uh, during floods, they act as buffers. And they also uh, are the main sources of uh, firewood for the local communities. And the uh, Mangroves uh, also act as a reservoir for the fish production and as well as uh, uh, the habitat uh, provides uh, uh, ecosystem benefits to the local people. Uh, then uh, one more aspect has been included in, in this uh, Gobardhan scheme in Government of India, new scheme, Gobardhan, WTW, what is it? W T W. Sir, I think WTW uh, is waste to wealth. Hmm. How uh, come? If I, sir, uh, Govardhan is utilizing the uh, cow dung. What is Govardhan? So, Govardhan is uh, creation of an compressed biogas, uh, uh, compressed biogas from the manure, uh, from the waste of the animals, sir, cow dung, to uh, bio compression it's biogas. It's nothing but a galvanizing organic bio agro resource, Gobar. Yes, sir. It's Govardhan scheme. That means the production of this uh, waste to wealth. Yes. New projects have been introduced into this manufacturing wing. Can you say something about uh, Amrut Darohar scheme? That's a new scheme introduced uh, in Government of India's budget. What is this uh, Amrut Darohar scheme? 
sir i don't exactly remember do you know something about wetland yes sir how many types of lands are there uh, sir uh, uh, based on the precipitation and the nature of the soil we can term lands mainly into wetlands or uh, uh, or a ter- non wetlands uh, the classification can be a wetland or the non wetland uh, the wetland uh, is a, a area in which at least uh, uh, there is a less than 6 uh, meters of uh, uh, water stagnation in the area in and all throughout the uh, throughout the year this amrut darawar scheme deals with the maximum utilization of uh, uh, this wetlands particularly introducing the ramsani units in this uh, aspect so the wetland gives a lot of uh, productivity and production when compared to the dry land because the for wetlands an assured irrigation system is known in order to develop the f- further the assured irrigation system wetlands are being propagated to increase the productivity and production okay sir i will liquid okay hemant what are the restrictions on freedom of speech and expression sir so, madam freedom of speech and expression uh, is restricted is not an absolute right it is uh, certain restrictions can be uh, implemented under the article 192 uh, which is uh, uh, some of them are uh, 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 some of them include uh, are, uh, when uh, uh, some of them include uh, uh, under the security and sovereignty of the state public law and order and uh, infringement of uh, personal uh, uh, rights like uh, defamation and uh, courts uh, defam uh, court defamation and personal defamation and uh, contempt to court who is your favorite sociological thinker so my so favorite social thinker is uh, 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 max weber max weber okay, what do you like in him max weber uh, saw a bridge between the theoretical aspects of sociology as well as the application of and real life orientation towards the subject uh, by using his ideal types concept he he's, he started looking at the things from a perspective which he believe which everybody believed it to be a infinite complex set of things uh, in understanding the society but What by i developing gail ombets contribution to our dalit movements ma gail ombets uh, i don't exactly last know. year she expired yes okay why joshi mat is thinking joshi mat uh, in uttarakhand has been in use due to land subsidence in the region uh, there has been uh, uh, why why land subsidence ma'am the himalayan region itself is uh, is is very new uh, folded mountains and it is not un- consolidated as of uh, uh, now it it has uh, uh, the anthropogenic pressures uh, in, and like the constructions in the joshi mat and the, there has been instances uh, linking that the uh, recent power project hydro power project uh, construction also involved mining so why there was earthquake in turkey what the exact reason for that recent earthquake in turkey turkey earthquake is mainly can be understood mainly with the plate tectonics madam uh, anatolian plate uh, anatolian uh, plate which is a minor plate is sandwiched between the arabian plate and the eurasian plate and the relative movement of uh, northward movement of the arabian plate has created a, a fault line between the anatolian plate and the uh, arabian plate madam the region uh, the recent earthquake happened at the uh, danger of this too right hemant sir <clears throat> so you have mentioned this fifo approach uh, can you elaborate on it sir fifo uh, is first in first out it is mainly employed in uh, l- uh, logistics as well as in uh, in in the logistics uh, or uh, we can say inventory management to be precise uh it is mainly used in our supermarkets in daily we we get to see in, in supermarkets like uh, when a object comes like a perishable product it should be uh, the first to leave the shelf uh because of the expiry dates it has so if we implement the first in first out philosophy in the supermarkets or the when it comes to the commodities which are perishable in nature so we can reduce or minimize the amount of wastage that will happen in the who do you the see uh, an application of this particular thing uh, in administration and also uh, probably to improve logistical performance index of our 
country as in a in a bigger scale sir i think fifo can be implemented uh, with respect to the uh, judiciary the case pendency has been high uh, around it's around 4 and 1/2 crore uh, cases have been pending in the indian judiciary judicial system and uh, if we can implement first in first out uh, uh, approach so we can uh, uh, specifically target the cases which are pending for more than 10 years or 20 years per se so another area where we can uh, implement this fifo is the file management or the file pendency as we see in day to day administration we can use this in the offices to uh, to reduce the turnaround time of the files that's what i can tell you okay uh, you did manufacturing engineering yes sir uh, why don't uh, india is not able to uh, leverage its manufacturing potential to the level which is which is being envisaged what are the reasons and what is the contribution of manufacturing sector to gdp so firstly uh, the contribution of manufacturing sector to the gdp is around 18 19% uh, uh, according to the recent estimates uh, uh, there there are many reasons uh, why manufacturing has not been uh, leveraged in terms of its potential uh, firstly it is the underskilling of the um, uh, workforce uh, accordingly uh, as per the estimates about 95% of the workforce is unskilled or not uh, prior certified in our country a uh, lack of skill is compounded by the lack of investment in the manufacturing sector most of the manufacturing sector requires heavy capital intensive uh, are heavily capital intensive and requires a lot of uh, investment into it when we see it, uh, the service sector the it requires less capital for more output the capital to output ratio in manufacturing is uh, much higher when compared to the service sector that might be the one of the reasons uh, for india to shift towards uh, a service oriented uh, uh, economy rather than a manufacturing driven economy but uh, and the other things include the forward and backward linkages which are uh, uh, which are uh, uh, which do not give india a cost advantage with respect to the products manufacturing products the logistics cost is around 13 to 14% of the gdp which is considered very high when compared to the other developing countries like china has around 10% of the logistics uh, sector and the fourth thing i feel is the lack of easy uh, exit and entry mechanism when it comes to the setting up of an industry in in india and the labor uh, regulations are also uh, my, um, there are multiple regulations and this leaves Uh, scope for uh, uh, confusion among the investors who are coming to the manufacturing right right so are you aware of uh, the budget allocation of mg narega in recent budget sir uh, i do not re- exactly recall the n- number but i uh, i i saw the news that the allocation has been uh, cut down by 33% in the recent budget when compared to the last budget sir. like how what kind of sociological impact might it create uh, going forward by cutting down the budget allocations to these kind of schemes sir uh, sociologically we, we can say the rural distress is mainly due to the off season uh, uh, unavailability of employment in the rural areas the mg narega has been helping uh, acting as a buffer to uh, address the gap during the lean seasons especially in the rural areas if the funds of mg narega are cut down it will lead to rise in the poverty level in the rural areas and as well as it will also encourage migration towards the urban areas who, which are already reeling under the pressure of migration sir right and uh, uh, one one more is the impact on impact on women who uh, at most of the times contribute to more than 50% of the mg narega workers who enroll them as, under mg narega this will red, further reduce the bargaining part of the women uh, who will be more dependent upon the men sir <coughs> thank you sir so ias and ips both work in collaboration they both are state or india services then why did you put the ias as a first choice and the ips as a fourth choice like practically you are not opting for ips so what's the reason there so the main reason is uh, is out of sheer practicality uh, i wanted to become an ias and nothing else sir uh, if i uh, if i get an ips this time uh, i will uh, it will become a, a 
a difficult job for me to certainly improve my rank, uh, uh, to de de devote my entire uh, uh, preparation towards uh, preparing for, uh, for another, another attempt. But you are I see. for other services, IRS, other services that will, what is the difference between not choosing IPS and choosing those particular services? Sir, uh, uh, I, uh, I feel that IRS is a much flexible in its working hours, so that gives me a, leaves me a room for preparing so for another time. So IRS does not allow you to do the active exam for the first, first year of your training. Okay. So that is the reason that is not the correct reason. Okay. And if you just wanted to become IRS, then you should have not opted for other services. Then the person who actually want to become the IRS or IPS would have become that. So do you think, are you wasting that particular part if you don't become IRS? No, so sir. Actually, if you just want to become IRS. You are pretty much clear about that. Yes. Then why are you opting for other services? Sir, uh, firstly, I want uh, uh, any a job security. So, uh, if, uh, for that, I have uh, I've opted other services too. Okay. So, would you, are you aware about <coughs> the electronic vehicles that are coming to future? Do you think, are these actually environment friendly? Sir, electrical vehicles can be seen as an uh, uh, eco-friendly alternatives to the uh, fossil fuel based uh, uh, vehicles uh, in terms of uh, uh, exhaust or the carbon emissions that they uh, constantly uh, emit. But I don't think electrical vehicles are completely eco-friendly options because the, the, uh, the manufacturing of the batteries and the sourcing of the metal involves mining uh, which re which requires a lot of water and uh, uh, and it's uh, carbon intensive and the recent technology uh, technological up to date says that the 100% recycling of the batteries is also a concern which will lead to e waste accumulation in the near future so in that perspective i see evs are not completely uh, eco friendly but it is, I think it's more of an engineering challenge rather than uh, so seeing it as. So says that the exhaust of the vehicle is quite pure. Mm -hmm. What is that? So from where does the electric vehicle charge? Electricity. From where do they charge? From the power generation. From where the power generates? So po power now is dependent upon the, majorly dependent upon the, the thermal power stations. Majorly on thermal? Yes sir. Which one? Coal? Coal, coal, coal which sir. Which one is more polluting? Coal or? Possible. The petroleum. Which one is more polluting? Sir, uh, coal is more uh, polluting, sir. Now you are contradicting yourself. Sir, uh, I think for electrical vehicles to be eco-friendly, we need to look at the backward side of the electricity generation too. Uh, if the vehicles are powered by the renewable energy sources like solar and wind, then uh, so the electrical so vehicles so can win. That means you are saying right now electric vehicles are more polluting the environment than the normal vehicle? Uh, no, no, sir. Uh, I mean to say that if the uh, we are already transitioning to the uh, renewable sources of energy... Yeah, like this is a very municipal percentage. That's not significant enough to say that the electricity that is being generated for the electric vehicle is from renewable. It's not right now. We can go in yes. future. Yeah, it's fine. But do you think that right now electric vehicles are more polluting the environment than the normal vehicle? So going by that logic, uh, with the production uh, of electricity being dependent upon the coal, electrical vehicles will uh, emit the same amount as other vehicles. Okay, fine. Another thing, recently we have found lithium mine in Kashmir. Uh, so there was one statement that it's a boon for India and bane for Kashmir. Do you, what's the, do you think it's correct statement or what exactly, why did the person come to this particular thing? Sir, uh, it's definitely a boon for India uh, because our dependence upon the lithium ion will drastically de de reduce in the upcoming future. Uh, the, the recent uh, amount of mine, uh, uh, prospective uh, lithium that is found will make India the fifth largest uh, proven reserves in the world in terms of lithium ion. Uh, but uh, anywhere the mining industry will have a negative consequence on the local population. I think in that perspective, it will be a bane for the Kashmiris. So, what are the one, really one question for you. So, you were just saying one of the major challenges for manufacturing, you said, is setting up an industry and leaving the industry, right? Yes, sir. So, 
One of the easiest sectors is service sector, yes, sir. which has now become a higher and higher open and closed industry. So, how do we handle this? Uh, uh, you, sir, uh, the manufacturing, sir. if you open up, okay. don't you think manufacturing will also start becoming higher and higher open and closed industry? Sir, uh, with enough uh, skill set among the people and uh, higher competition between the skilled labor, if that is achievable, then manufacturing will also move towards service oriented, uh, uh, easy layoff and uh, easy recruitment uh, kind of uh, okay. business. Sir. Still, didn't, actually, they didn't get your answer. Okay. Um, some of the strongest socialist manufacturing sectors are in Europe, Sir. like France and Germany. And they still are very good at manufacturing. Where, what is the single weakness we have? If you want to identify a weakness, what is the weakness we have when you compare with European markets? And what are the four things that you need for manufacturing? Sir, I don't exactly know what is the difference between the manufacturing in Germany or France when compared to the India. Uh, but I can think of uh, 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 areas where manufacturing industry can uh, excel it. So, first uh, is the we need a transition from the uh, low skill level to the medium skill level, which is possible through uh, uh, labor intensive industries like apparel or textiles. And then we can only transition to high level manufacturing as, as seen in the exa example of China. So, secondly, is the uh, uh, credit access to the MSME sector especially. A uh, recent RBI report also stated that there is a the gap of 20 to 25 lakh crore of credit gap in the MSME sector which is hindering their expansion and which is hindering their capacities as of now. If you can enable easy credit access like a PA, a MSME loan in 59 minutes uh, uh, and other schemes uh, like credit link schemes, uh, we can uh, ramp up the infrastructure. And the other thing that is holding back manufacturing in India is the uh, uh, is the uh, amount of capital, uh, as I well uh, mentioned earlier. And the fourth thing is the integration of the supply chains with the world supply chains, uh, improving the hinterland connectivity and uh, creation of uh, what we see is uh, uh, the sets uh, have not been successful as uh, reported uh, by the Baba Kalyani committee, and there is an uh, cluster based manufacturing uh, sectors like uh, Desh, uh, uh, developing enterprises and service hubs can be a way forward for uh, increasing the export uh, export potential as well as the competitiveness of the manufacturing industry. Sir. Okay, so be consistent in delivering the answers. The consistency is the most important aspect. You cannot be inconsistent. Okay. Sir. And don't make the contradictory statements. Sir. So before that, uh, you must be thorough with the <coughs> subject uh, in delivering the answer. So that's known as the consistency. You stick on to that and all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hemant, uh, one small thing. <coughs> but, uh, actually, there are two things. Reasonable restrictions, Sir, uh, suddenly I wouldn't be able to call that. Reasonable why, restrictions why, on freedom of speech. Why, uh, I'll give you time. Uh, Sir, public order and public order uh, is <coughs> so in it, uh, threat to sovereignty and integrity of the nation, sovereign Co uh, yeah. contempt of the court, and uh, individual uh, public morality. Defama defamation, defamation of morality. See, the point is, you know that. Sir. And that Mark Telusun, Telusun. But why are you rushing towards giving the answer? We know that you know it. Of course, you know it, that's why you are here. Yes. There is a difference. So, wait. And also, I asked you this question, uh, sociological impact of decreasing uh, MG Narayaka funds. Yes, the answer was very good. But let me tell you one thing, that uh, while you were answering the first point, you thought about the second point and that was completely visible. And you suddenly jumped onto it. Sud so, which would have been avoided if you would have taken a little gap? Okay, the panelist has asked me sociological impact, MG Narega. What are all, all the sociological impacts MG Narega is creating? Women impact, 
right? Uh, this rural migration impact. So two three points of side you get two to two to three points. Then come on. That would be you know more balanced. Uh, wait a little. Okay. And uh, second thing, that was a trap which was laid uh, that IAS and IPS one. See, uh, of course you need to be honest, but uh, you need not get into that particular trap. Uh, you effectively has nullified everything. Like everybody has, uh, you know, forgotten what you have talked till then. You suddenly nullified everything, saying that you are only here for civil service, which is IAS. Okay. And you contradicted yourself by opting all the things, saying the job security. That was like completely laid down the trap, and you went into that trap. And you should not agree with everything I am saying. Like from the yeah, you can. It's fine, I was leading you towards that particular direction. But you should stop yourself. You should understand that I was taking you to that particular path. You should have stopped me, sir, I was not aware. <coughs> I cannot make that particular statement. Or something regarding that. Yes. You should not just completely contradict yourself from illegal is not polluting to this, more polluting yes. than the possible. Probably you would have said to that IPS answer that, sir, my personality, in my personal feeling, that my personality is more suitable to the other services rather than IPS. That's yes. completely acceptable. If you yourself are feeling that, why would we contradict with you? Yes. So my, my personal feeling, that's my personality, is more suitable for revenue services or administrative services rather than police service. But this, uh, Fine. you're saying that only IAS huh. might even backfire if huh. that people back are not from the... Yes. Okay. You're like, see, we're not directly coming, it may look like you're downgrading the others, then you're like, yes. I only think IAS is the one, others are... <coughs> That, that shows you, uh, like, oh, that, that, that was the only point where your childishness came out. Okay. Right? Rest apart, you know, you are actually answering in a very good fashion. But stop and don't get into the traps. You need not agree. Yes. You wait for the answer. See, when you go into the trap, when you are in you know, a question answer, question answer mode. When they have, even. I should have continued there also. I'll uh -huh. leave you there. You uh -huh. know? Like, what? Are you willing to spend your life in a dustbin that you don't want? That would have been my next question. Okay. Are you willing? Like that's how sadistic you are going to be. Okay. 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 So, I like, this type of so, uh, so you need shouldn't. So, traps like April ta wande fast ka answer ichna puru. Prati question boss says ko. Okay. Uh, so that shows that gives you time as well. Right? You will not go into that traps. Wal hari ja sound taro. But you need not get hurry. You can be at your own pace. Okay. Right? Yes, sir. Okay, Haimant. All the best. Thank you, sir. Overall, it was good. When is your interview? March 17, sir. Okay, you have one. Yeah. You have knowledge also. You have good knowledge. Yes, but sir. this that only is a uh, smaller one. You, should, you would also be yeah. expecting this. If people would ask questions. Sir, so I thought of uh, giving in a different answer. But in this uh, particular uh, interview, I thought of uh, experimenting with the other option as well. My, fr my opinion. Uh, Will it backfire or not? I wanted to check it out. Uh, so it is not a good option now, I feel. So. Okay. Nice. Thank you.